So this video is going to be about how I prep something to do small epoxy pours. Whether you're filling in knots or cleaning up a glue job, cracks, checks, you name it. This is going to be my guide on how I do it. Um, there's not a lot of videos out there that really show this kind of thing. It's kind of a try it and learn uh, process. Um, it's an expensive try and learn. If you've ever worked with epoxy or this is your first time, you're going to learn that Epoxy is not cheap to screw up with. So I want to do a video just showing how I do it. If it helps, awesome. You know, take what you want from it. There's a bunch of different ways to do it. Um, but this is just my way for doing, again, smaller stuff. Um, you're not going to need much. Some tuck tape, Tyvek tape, house wrap tape. It's all the same. It does, the epoxy doesn't stick to it. Some scrap pieces of wood. Eventually, I've already got this one cut and ready to go for this. But you'll have to... Get whatever you need for that. Tube silicone, and eventually we'll need a hot glue gun, or you can also use silicone, and I'll explain that more. But this is the overview of the video. Um, I'll try to keep it short and sweet so you're not listening to me talk the whole time, and I hope you like it. For the sake of keeping the video short, before I shot this, I already cleaned up all the voids and knots and got all that loose material out of there that I could. You want to make sure that you do that because you don't want to pour this stuff over anything that's loose or won't let it bond well to the workpiece. Use whatever you can at your disposal, chisel, screwdriver, anything works really. Some of this smaller stuff on the end, these cracks that go all the way through, well, some of them don't go all the way through, but you get the picture. These are a little tougher to fill only because it's hard to chase all the air out of them, so there's a lot more babysitting involved, but still the process is exactly the same. You prep it, you pour it, you pop the air bubbles, you add more as you need it. So I flipped this over and this is the back side of the project. What I'm going to do now is tape up anything that I think may go all the way through. Knots, cracks, voids, bug holes, anything and everything. A piece of tape is cheap. It's, it's a very easy precaution and it can prevent you from making a big mess that you don't want to make. Small cracks like this, I don't generally make forms for. I usually trust a piece of tape because it's small. This epoxy will sometimes leach um, after it sits for a couple days. And what that does is it kind of pops the tape loose and it'll create a leak. And the problem is, is once you get a leak with this stuff, there's almost nothing you can do to stop it. So make sure that everything's clean, neat. The tape's on there firm, no air bubbles, cracks, any places for this stuff to, to seep out. Bigger spots like this, you'll see I make a form for to create that watertight basin or form, whatever you want to call it. Keep in mind that you want to do this stuff with the, with the mentality of, can I pour a cup of water in this and will it hold? Because epoxy is just like water. If there's a spot to leak, it will find it and you'll have a mess on your hands and stuff where you don't want it. I've made the comment about gluing stuff to tables and leaks and this, that, and the other. It's happened to me. Again, it was a lesson learned that nobody told me. But this is just a, a piece of three-quarter inch plywood. It's covered completely in house wrap tape, Tyvek tape, tuck tape, whatever you got. This is real handy. Epoxy will not stick to it. Wood glue won't stick to it. It's a good working surface if you're using stuff at any kind of adhesives. If you don't, not everybody's got the space or the time or the want or the need for this. I understand that. I use these. It's definitely helped me in the past. So if you think that's something like that will help you, you can make one and keep it around the shop and just kind of touch it up as you need to. And it's not a one-time use thing. Before you go to tape anything up, make sure everything's vacuumed off. It helps to have everything sanded. Um, just helps tape stick better. It doesn't have to, but I would definitely suggest it. A piece of advice for doing these epoxy pours is get your pouring done before you got everything cut down to size, before you got everything perfect, everything finished sanded. You got room to breathe there if you screw it up then. I sand mine to 80 grit just so the tape sticks and everything works a little bit better. Obviously, everything you do is usually always going to be different. You know, there's either going to be different knots or it's not going to have a bottom. It's going to go all the way through and be a big gap. This one, we don't have that. Everything on this ha has a backer to it, per se. You know, the wood doesn't go all the way through. So you don't have to worry about building a, a bottom for this, a bottom part of the form. I'm going to make another video that covers that on how I do the river tables or anything that you have an actual open void on. But this one, so we got I got it clamped down. 
and that piece of wood I had earlier, I've got pocket holes drilled in it. And that's what I'm gonna use. I'm gonna screw it down to this kind of sacrificial base and that'll force that up against there and that will create our form. And then we're gonna use silicone to go around this and that will create our watertight seal. Now the silicone won't really stick to this stuff either, but it sticks enough that it creates a seal. You don't have to worry about it. Just make sure you give it a day or two to dry up real well. Um, or obviously you run the risk of having leaks. But that's the other reason I use these is everything, you just it's just kind of sacrificial. You use it over and over, you get screw holes in it, you cover them up with a new piece of tape and you're good to go. But that, that's gonna be the basis for building our form for this big void that's got a hole that we gotta create a barrier for. So it'll be something just like that. So when you go to put your silicone on, you don't wanna be right up on the very edge because obviously when you put that form on, it gives it the chance to roll into the void, which you don't want. You wanna stay as far back as you can. Inevitably, there's gonna be times like this situation, I'm sure I'm gonna get some of it down in here where I don't want it. But that also comes back to the whole point of this isn't cut to length yet. So if it does get in there a little bit, when you do finish cut it to length, you got some play in there. You can cut out some nasty stuff that you don't want in there or that you weren't happy with. but you want a pretty good bead. This one fits pretty good, up tight against it, but you definitely don't want to get too stingy with it. Silicone's cheap, a hell of a lot cheaper than a big epoxy leak or a major problem when you go to actually pour. So don't be shy with it, it's gonna make a mess it's not necessarily going to look pretty, but it's just part of the game when you're doing it like this. Another option you have when you go to do this, if you don't have the pocket screw jig or don't want to mess with that, if you're not gonna see your edges or anything you're not working on, you can just run screws into it. You know, wherever you got a, a good chunk of wood to get into, that works just as well, especially when you use the silicone to seal it up. Then the silicone's doing the bulk of the heavy lifting when it comes to sealing it, and all you're doing is just fastening it up against your workpiece. So whichever works best for you. You can see in here, that's what I was talking about. There's some extra that bulged out. That's okay, not the end of the world. Get in there and clean it up the best you can. And hopefully you left yourself enough room to cut off some junk on the end. It bulged out there, a little bit there. So I know we got a good seal all the way around. A couple days to dry, and that's your basic form. The last thing I do before I'm ready to pour is everything that I'm gonna fill, I go around with some hot glue or silicone and you create a barrier, kind of a, a, a containment for that epoxy. To, number one, keep it where you want it. Two, the other thing it does is if your piece isn't exactly level and you need to over pour something to make up for that, that little bit extra gives you that buffer zone where you can add a little bit extra without it running everywhere on the board and creating a bigger mess to have to clean up. Something I've noticed, if you don't plan on using epoxy as your top coat, sometimes this epoxy will leave a stain wherever you poured something. When I say stain, what I mean is is it is obviously this is going to soak into the wood some and if you don't take all that back off after you're done sanding and you apply like a rubio or polyurethane something like that it's going to show that stain because that epoxy i can't explain it i don't know what the deal is behind it but it's burned me in the past so that's another reason i do this to try to minimize that so keep that in mind as you're planning this if you're going to do an epoxy top coat you probably don't need to go around it. you can just let it go it's your call, it's your project. Just know that uh, you can make some extra work for yourself. So it's an easy step to try to prevent that. I'll just show you what I meant by going around it. You don't have to be right on the edge, it's just gotta serve a purpose. You're creating a containment. 
it's it's going to be ugly. I mean, you can get you can try to make it look good, but it doesn't really matter. It's just all it is is holding the liquid. On the edges here, I try to build up a little bit on the edge just so it doesn't flow over and uh, run out of the crack. This is going to get routered and it's going to get cut down, so it's really a, not an issue on this particular project. But uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it helped you. We'll see you on the next one.